The purpose of this presentation is to explain step by step how you would prepare a complaint for the Daffy Duck versus Don, John Doe case. And this is um, hopefully a nice and linear approach to what the paralegal is asked to do on a regular basis and that is preparing that document called a complaint which is a pleading that initiates a lawsuit. The first step in preparing a complaint is to type a caption or a style for the Daffy Duck uh, complaint. And this illustration right here is intended to give you an exact, um, almost exact example of what a case caption or a st also called a style would look like or what it would include more or less. And uh, the next slide, as you will see, has some more particular guidance for to help you with the formatting, the specifics as far as formatting of a caption slash style. And as a side note, I wanted to include this note about what court has jurisdiction because as you're going to learn in the next slide when I explain what a complaint includes as far as I, I'm sorry when I explain what a caption or a style includes you need to know the court's jurisdiction so that you can type the jurisdiction of the court into the heading right here this is the court heading uh, but anyway this illustration right here is exactly the content of a court uh, caption style for the Daffy Duck complaint. So you might want to print this slide or uh, better yet uh, start a word processing document now and type this into the word processing document. And on the next slide I'm going to show you the specifics in terms of the formatting guidances. This resource is one that I prepared a long time ago and again it's something you may want to print out and have handy as you uh, work through your paralegal courses and through the uh, and through your career. It's uh, based on some standardized customs that have been followed for a long time in uh, the American court system and these are fairly natural or I should say very very applicable to almost every state uh, there are some exceptions, but for our purposes, and usually those things that you do in, within our paralegal program here, you'll find that this is um, fairly common, and uh, a lot of this stuff is just based on customs that we've been uh, using for years and years in the court system. <coughs> now remember the previous slide I showed you what the Daffy Duck versus D John Doe case would look like. and this is a different case, but the idea is to illustrate for you the different parts of a caption or a style. Number one is the court heading, and you can find they're labeled here, so if you look at the label, the number label, you can re uh, map it more or less to the uh, illustrations. You can map the illustrations to what they include. So the court heading, the party names. Notice I have included some pretty specific instructions on how to type the party names which are, are keyed in all capital letters. It's very common in our legal system to type the names of parties in all capital letters and here you're going to follow each of these by a comma. You see that comma? Students miss that a lot and I want to point that out that it is here. Um, Basically, you know, print this for yourself so you have something to help you through it. You'll see some minor differences, particularly in the court heading, and uh, for the case that we're doing for for Daffy Duck uh, uh, versus John Doe. But uh, more or less, this is uh, for a circuit court case. Notice the case number. We don't have a case number. It's blank because until you file the complaint with the court and take it to the clerk, you don't have a case number. 
So there won't be a case number in your, the complaint that you prepare. The next step after preparing the um, caption, or also known as a style, is to find a form. And the best thing you can do as a paralegal, the, the first step to make your job easier, is to first make sure that there, or see if there is a form out there. The, the wheel is not reinvented every day, and court rules not only guide us in what procedural step we're going to take, <coughs> but they also uh, have forms in them that are huge time savers and do the job for us in terms of getting us started. And on step two slide here, what I have set up for you is a um, little instruction about what the court rules are and the fact that you uh, can find some standardized forms in the court rules. And here's a website for the Florida Bar where a copy of the court rules are found. In the classroom, you'll find that we have printed copies of the court rules um, in big, thick books. Uh, but for the case of this online course, it's a little easier just to direct you right to the Florida Bar website, which I can consider a reliable website because it comes from a, a source called the Florida Bar. Uh, who is a, that is an authority in areas related to the practice of law. If you click on that link I provided, you will see that the first page that opens opens just like any other book to a table of contents. And the rules are numbered, all right, and the page of the rule is here on the right hand column. This is the title of the rule. So rule 1.010 is titled scope and title of rules and you can find it on page 11 of this PDF file that I just gave you the link to called the Florida Rules of Civil Procedure. And again this is the table of contents. Uh, you could, it's a good idea to use a table of contents for your research sometimes to see what am I doing. Uh, sometimes you will not yet, some of you that have never worked in law will not always understand what all these titles mean. I mean, what's, what the scope of each of these is. But you will, you'll get used to it in, over time. So that's the first page of the Florida Rules of Civil Procedure table of contents. The fourth page you can see I have the fourth page open now, has miraculously changed its scope from what was on the previous page of rules to forms. So beginning on page four, page uh, of, the, of the document, you'll see on page 138 of the rules, there are uh, a lot of forms. Look at these. A caption. If you want to see if what you're doing is done correctly, you might look at the caption rule form. There's a form that shows us basically what I showed you earlier, a few um, customs that I've added to my own resources. Uh, if you want to know what a cross-claim summons might look like, there you go. Third-party summons, what does it look like? Well, you can look at one here. The attachment, um, is, attachment is a is a type of um, proceeding. Garnishment, writ of replevin, a distress claim, subpoena for trial, uh, and so on and so forth. So all of these are forms, as you see, they have switched their, uh, f from rule to form. On the next page of the rules, I've highlighted the form that we're going to use to prepare the complaint for the Daffy Duck case. Form 1.942 is a check complaint, a complaint for a check. Uh, page 192 <coughs> of the document will help you find that. If you turn to page 192, and actually 193 because it spans two pages. You'll see 
form 1.942 is a check and you'll see that it's for a complaint and this is why these forms are so valuable they do the job for us they get us started so then all we have to do is use our critical thinking skills to fill in the blanks and I'm going to help you with that in a little bit you can see there's a uh, this, this follows all the standard uh, the resources in the previous presentation you'll see pretty much involve all of the standards here this is the title of the document here's the introductory clause here's the body with the numbered paragraphs here's the final uh, in Latin they called it an addendum clause and it's called a wherefore clause a lot of times in the in the law office you'll also see that there are some notes uh, they're guiding us in saying that if you're going to file one of these complaints you need to uh, include a copy of the check and here are some other committee notes the next step, step three is taking that form that you found or located from form 1.942 and I've literally copy I use my mouse my uh, mouse pointer and I highlight all the text from the rule book and I copy and paste that directly into my document where it uh, should be placed uh, you'll remember you do not want to include any of those notes that I pointed out on the previous slide so this will be uh, pure, purely the form itself and not the notes or the page numbers that come along with that type of copy and paste you know, what you see is what you get you have to clean up what you get the, so as I point out here the text above is from the Florida Rules of Court form 1.942 simply copy and paste the text of the rule form, form rule to your document and placing it below the case caption style that I already recommend you prepare uh, in, a, in the, one of the previous steps. So you prepared the case caption style that says in the county court, Manatee County, you know, Daffy Duck, plaintiff versus John Doe, defendant, and drawn a little line with a slash that ends it, and uh, the case number blank space is also typed in there and then right below that you will t just literally copy and paste this information alright now notice that um, like I said uh, what you see is what you get it, it's copied exactly as in the form document from the PDF file and you sometimes have to clean that up Growler okay so I apologize for the cat noise it's my visitor, and um, it might, Growler is his name. Might be making some other noises as I work through this presentation. Okay, so you've typed a caption or style, as you want to call it, and you've copied and pasted the form uh, wording, the language of the form, right below that into the word processing document, and now it's time to think critically about the facts of the case here we have uh, John Doe um, who's written the check and the date of the check um, is you can put August 1st and put last year or this year depending on the date that you're listening to this presentation uh, so what this YR minus 1 means is you may not use the present year just put the same year and Daffy Duck uh, John Doe who are the parties the plaintiff is Daffy Duck the defendant is John Doe what kind of relief that means what damages does uh, Daffy Duck want what does she want the court to do for her well of course she wants uh, the court to order John Doe to pay Daffy Duck the money that John Doe owes her for the treadmill plus any other damages such as service fees, attorney fees, etc.
So we've copied that information and critically thought about what types of, I guess you can call this, variable data go into the form. And again, in your word processing document, you've copied and pasted the text of the rule, form of the rule, right out of the rule book, right there. And now we simply insert the correct information. So the plaintiff we decided is Daffy Duck and we type that in here with all capital letters so delete this text that I've underlined and insert Daffy Duck's name in all capital letters. Here we're suing John Doe delete this text that I've underlined and insert John Doe. This one is the jurisdictional amount and uh, having not covered that in this presentation, I will just tell you that this is by uh, rule of court, the county court small claims division. As a result, this is really a directional um, information, uh, some text I should say, that the rule includes. It says insert jurisdictional amount. And so I'm going to tell you exactly what goes here. It says this is an action for damages that you delete insert jurisdictional amount and remove those parentheses around it and type in is less than five thousand dollars and you can type you should fi type five thousand dollars in numeric form so that would be a dollar sign and then five comma zero 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 all of that followed by a period here, the date, you insert the date of that check that I discussed on the previous slide. And here, we're going to put the amount of the check. And here is the full amount that Daffy Duck wants given to her by the, wants the court to order that John Doe give her. Remember, in our research, we learned that there might be some service fees and attorney fees involved. Uh, when you include attorney fees, um, you um, would um, maybe put a comma right after check, right here, put a comma, and then just type the wording plus attorney fees. Because we don't know what those are exactly, and that's, a, again, another lesson that um, is completely outside the scope of this one. And then the wherefore clause is already in the text. So in other words, look how easy this is. Just copy and paste the text of the rule form and insert the data. Delete what doesn't belong there anymore. The, the prompt, this is, these are what you could call prompts that the rule form includes. And you can delete the prompts. Or you should delete the prompts. And sometimes, like with the case of attorney fees over here, you have to use uh, you have to add a little bit, uh, and sometimes um, that's just absolutely necessary. The, the forms aren't perfect. The forms are designed so that all the elements of the claim are explained to the court, and that's really important in, in preparing a complaint. They, you must state a cause of action, and to state a cause of action in the rule, I'm sorry, in the form called the complaint, the pleading, must show all the elements. Okay. Lastly, the final part of preparing a complaint is typing in a signature block. And a signature block is simply explaining to the court, and by rule of court, you have to include the name of the person submitting the claim. And in this case, we're working with an attorney. And so Daffy Duck doesn't go in here her attorney is included here, and that's Jeanette Cannon. Now, this is an illustration of a signature block. This text that you see here is what will be seen to the reader. The reason for these illustrations is to show you how to format it. All right, so I'm in suggesting like enter keystrokes down here. Use the enter keystroke to make space between horizontal lines of text. 
So enter, this is making space between the document above, which would be the wherefore clause in our case, and then, so there's a little bit of space between that wherefore clause and the signature block, the beginning of the signature block. And this is something that students um, sometimes need a little bit of guidance on. So let me take a minute. Do you see this red line? This is saying that all of this text needs to be vertically aligned. And notice how every single line of text is vertical. It lines right up. It's nice and neat. For this reason, you need to use the tab keystroke or many students know to reset the margin, the left margin to do this. But I'm recommending if you don't uh, know or if you feel a little overwhelmed by all of this, just use the tab keystroke and press tab six times and to start typing the law firm name. Select, you know, press enter then and start tab tabbing to the same place so it's vertically aligned, the street address. And same step over and over until you have this block of text in there. Uh, then you a little bit of blank space, so you enter, press enter, and again do the same thing and type in a little line. This is where the attorney will actually sign her name on that little line of space. And then here Jeanette Cannon's name and her Florida bar number goes in there. This is critical. Every element of this signature block is governed by the court rules. Now I've worked for a lot of different attorneys. They have some different ways. Some, some paralegals work for attorneys that design this just a little bit differently. But in reality, they're doing exactly what's on here, maybe putting the law, lawyer's name up, up oops, oops, the lawyer's name um, in another place, um, that sort of thing. But uh, if, generally speaking, this is what's included in the rules that needs to be included in this document. Also notice these are single spaced and it is absolutely essential that you know how to single space your text. You do that in your word processing document and uh, generally speaking the, the body of the pleading is usually double spaced and down here you have to change your line spacing so that it's single spaced. And what I mean by single spaced is there's no space. There's not a line of blank text between each line of text here. So these are all bunched up together with no space between them. That's single spacing. And here are some uh, hints that I have already disclosed pretty much uh, in my, in my uh, discussion just now. So that's the signature block. This I return to, this uh, preparing complaints handout was given to you in the lesson. And again, it's just, uh, it's not just, it's a really valuable tool. In fact, I received an email from a student who got hired at a um, local organization. And the student told me that this handout was the Bible, so to say, that the um, student was told to use in preparing documents. Uh, this is just a little uh, picture of what the front page of that Bible, so to say, looks like. But it's really an important resource for this and all your courses, and you can take it with you to your workplace because it's meant, to, it's designed to do that, to last for a long time. All right, so the, back to this resource, remember in, uh, back to this resource, remember the next page has, uh, or in that is an example of a complaint, and the idea of this is to help you see some of the formatting techniques. That's what this is all about. There's a bottom, top and bottom margin. All of this was in a previous presentation I've already asked you to look at prior to getting to this point, so I won't reiterate it, but the point of including it here now is you've drafted this complaint. You've put in a caption or you or a style as you want to call it. You have a top you've copied and pasted this you know wonderful language from a rule of court form and now you want to make sure your work is nice and uh, clean and, and really good looking. It looks like it's supposed to look. What These are all customs that 
all par most all paralegals are following and their lawyers are expecting this of them so you finish the work you may have used a form and copied and pasted it but this last part of it is to format the document with all the correct formatting the line spacing the margins and that sort of thing this is the second page um, you know this example has a different location um, that is just an example but you know same name of the attorney she has a different office let's say but uh, don't be confused by that the address is the one on the slide in Bradenton or you can use the Tampa address for your complaint I really don't care the objective of this assignment is to help you learn the process in a linear fashion of how we prepare a complaint what kinds of tools we use and resources we use to get that done so the final steps always run a spell check run spell checks all the time even when you know you've done it right I can't tell you how many times I've run a spell check and found something that I didn't even realize I spelled wrong and I couldn't see with my eyes even though I have perfect vision with glasses <laughs> um, use your examples the reason w for example that I use uh, the previous two slides remember had an example of a complaint uh, those resources you use those resources to help improve what you're or to use as a modeling you have something to model your problem from and that's uh, look at the resources you've seen in the previous slides to make sure you've done this correctly uh, save your document with your last name followed by the title of this lesson and then submit the document to the Dropbox that I've assigned you to submit it to and that's all um, I'm sure everybody will do great and now we've walked you right through it and you know how to prepare a complaint using a form from the Florida Rules of Civil Procedure.